Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming along to the session today. Today we're going to look at a very specific um, set of tasks in Quercos. We're going to look into bringing in different types of data. In particular, we've had lots of requests recently from people who are looking to bring in um, structured data. So they're doing uh, structured interviews or bringing in survey data and wanting a little help in formatting that and making sure it comes in correctly into Quercos. Uh, so that's what we're going to be focusing on specifically today. So um, I'm using Quercos Cloud here. Um, it's exactly the same if you're using the offline version, which stores the projects um, on your file rather than on our secure servers. Um, so there's no difference in what I'm showing you here, depending on which version of Quercos you're, you're using. Um, so you can see I've got my recently used uh, list of projects here. I've also got projects shared with me for live collaboration, and that's, that is the one feature only supported in the cloud, obviously. Um, but what I'm going to do now is create a, a new project and I'm going to bring in some structured data today. So we're going to create a uh, project data. We'll call this a uh, structured webinar project. Um, and then we're going to turn on this option here, which is one which a lot of people miss. So this is the option for structured questions. And this basically structures the database in Quercos projects that makes sure that you can bring in exactly the same questions across all the different sources. So if you're doing a structured interview rather than a semi-structured interview, this is the option that you would use. Now for qualitative research, a lot of people use unstructured interviews uh, or focus group discussions or other sources of data that don't have a set kind of uh, question and answer in the same order or, or worded in exactly the same way. But when you are doing that and you are looking for the, the qualitative open-ended um, responses. This is the option to use and I'll show you how you can bring in different data to that. So we'll create that new project um, and that's created it now in the cloud. Um, and if you're not familiar with Quercos, this is the standard view. So we've got this space on the left for our canvases, the space on the right for our sources. So this is where the codes go on the left side and this is where the data that we're going to bring in comes. And you see within the structure question project we've got this additional tab here which is for questions and this allows us to create um, uh, questions uh, which are basically the same across all the sources. So we've asked the same thing to all the participants in the data. So along the very top you'll see the click to add source button. So I'm going to press the button here uh, and it says here um, so you've got options. So new blank source, import source, single file, from clipboard or from CSV. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in single files. So these are Word files that I have um, with kind of structured questions. So this is the import view for uh, the structured questions project. And the difference here is that this has got a question marker and an answer marker. So this is basically looking to see um, uh, how in your project you've structured um, the questions and the answers. So if I show you the, the file that I have here, the Word file, um, so here I've got a, a Q colon and A colon to designate the question and the answer. Now it might be that we had something like uh, Daniel is the interviewer and Simon is the interviewee and in that case it would be formatted in that way for that particular interview um, but this case I've done Q and A for all of them. So by default Quercos guesses that your question marker is going to be question colon then answer colon but here I can see as I showed you it's Q shows me where the question is and A is where the answer is. And that just lets Quercos read through the text and find the questions and find the answers. So now if I select that file, so I've got a folder here and this is interview one. You can see it's brought in these the, the questions and it's identified these from the from the source, sorry. So uh, what did you like about this session? How can we improve this session? Any suggestions for future sessions? Now, even though this is in a free flowing Word document, um, I've set these interviews and transcribed them in a way which means that I always have this cue and answer and the questions are always in this order. And so now it's correctly identified these questions. So if I click import, great. So it shows me here, I've got, there's the question. What did you like about this session? It was shortened to the point. How can we improve the session? I think it should have been easier to access. So the text of the answer we can now um, work with. Uh, we can select it and code. Um, drag and drop it onto files here, uh, easy to access, to start uh, coding and kind of pulling out some of the themes there. Um, but let's bring in another file here. 
So for the structure questions, if you're bringing them in from Word, you do have to bring them in one by one. And that's because you may have um, different names for the interviewer and for the interviewee. Um, that's not the case in the way that I formatted this. Um, and you have to change the interview markers before you select the file. So I didn't do that there. So you need to change the question and answer marker before you try to load the file because that's when it tries to read it. So it's picked up the questions there again. Click import. And I've got another tab here for source two. I've got this other one. How can we improve this session? Uh, I think it was a bit basic. So if I select some of that text, drag and drop it onto the bubble, bit basic. Great. So that's uh, really helped here and we can go through and code some more uh, so yeah there's one here advanced users so I'm going to create a theme for that love to see a session queue towards advanced users drag and drop that onto the advanced users there great um, I'm just going to make the text a bit bigger for you guys actually so you can see at home easier there we go okay so that's one way that we can bring in structured data. Uh, the second one is to bring it in from a spreadsheet file. So uh, if you've got tabulated data, and this may very well come from uh, an Excel file that you've generated, like this one here, um, or it need, may need come from something like an online survey platform. So something like SurveyMonkey or eServe um, or any of these platforms will, will give you a CSV export of your file in this kind of spreadsheet format. And you can play with it in uh, Google Docs or LibreOffice or Excel as we have here. And one of the other things that I do quite a lot is I use um, a spreadsheet like this to keep track of my participant data. So for example, I've got um, the names of the people that I've interviewed, um, uh, their age and so other characteristics I know about them, but also the interview date. And it could even be things like whether I've got their um, uh, permission form back, uh, the consent form for taking part in the survey, um, or if I need to chase them up on a certain date. So any data that I can have about the participants, I often keep that in a spreadsheet file during the course of the research. But you can do that without having to have it in a spreadsheet file directly in qualitative data analysis software like Quercos. Um, and that way you keep all of that data with your sources um, even before you have the, the, the sources of the data, so the interviews and things like that. Um, and that can help keep everything in one place. So here I've actually got exactly the same questions. Um, so imagine that I've half of the people that I managed to interview face to face and half of the people I had to move and do that online. Um, so this is now online survey responses. So you can see they're a little bit more um, snippy, a little bit shorter, but it's the same questions in the same order. And if I save this as a CSV file, so make sure we've got this CSV option here, um, and then click Save, so it's in survey data there, I can bring this into the same project. So if I click here on the plus button at the top right, import source is from CSV. So I already have my interviews from Word files, but I can add these to the CSV data as well. And when you import data from CSVs, so this applies even with whether you're using structured or unstructured questions, uh, projects, um, you'll get these options. So it basically Quercos reads the, um, the title of each column. So you see across here, we've got um, name, age, gender, interview date, etc. So it reads those. And then the next property here is, um, it's basically guessing how you want to treat the data in the project. So something like an ID number, it guesses, is going to be a property. So that's something which is um, not a long string of text. Um, so it's going to be best as a source property. And we'll look at those in a minute. But we've got some other options here. So you can even, um, I'm going to actually ignore those. Uh, so I don't need my ID number to come in here. That's really just something that the survey software gave me. Um, and you may have other fields in there, like um, the time that the interview was completed and how long they spent on each question and so on and so forth. And I don't need any of those, that kind of data. So you can choose the ignore function for that. Next one, the name, I'm actually going to have that as the title. So that makes it the title of each source. So when I'm tabbing across the tabs here, I'll have the name of the participants to identify them. Um, these are anonymized names, so it's OK for me to do that. But you may want to use the ID number for the title and have the name as being a property. Uh, so the age and gender, definitely something I want to property. The interview date is also a property. 
And then these are the questions. So these are the long form uh, text answers, the unstructured open text answers that I want to do qualitative analysis on. So by default, if there's a uh, question mark at the end of one of these fields, Quirkos guesses that it's going to be a question rather than a property. So everything else gets treated as a property by default, uh, but it's a question if it sees a question mark at the end of it, because that's likely how most of those are going to be um, structured. But you can always choose change that here. So for example, we could have these responses be a property and that would work fine too. Um, and you can manually choose any of these to be a question if you want to. And so if we bring these in, so we've only got, again, three sources for this little example here. Um, and it's going to add those three to the ones existing ones we have. So now we have tabs here for Clara and Simon. And we can see we've got those responses there. Simon, how do we improve this session? Um, needs to be a lot more depth at this level. So let's let's put that in for sure. Um, drag and drop that onto the bit basic file. Uh, some geared towards the session is more advanced. Yeah, so that goes into the advanced user. So you can see some themes are kind of popping up here already. Um, and if I click on Clara's tab here, okay, so there we've got those as well. So that's added those to the sources that we brought in from the Word files. You see we've got the source one and source two, those were the Word files. We've got Simon, Sousa and Clara's questions and answers. So when we're in the structured questions view, you can jump to any of the answers in the drop down box here. And you can also move through them sequentially with this arrow here to flip through them. Uh, our answers here are very short, so it's not really helping very much to do that. But if you've got kind of long responses for each of those, that's super helpful. And you can also edit the struct questions here. So um, it's taken the wording from the files that we imported, uh, but we can edit the wording here for the question. Um, so we could have, uh, what did you like most? Maybe we change the wording a little and then we can update that. Um, and then we can also remove other questions in there as well. Um, so the other thing which I showed you was the properties and that's accessed with this tab here. So this shows the properties tab. So for the ones that we imported from the word file, we don't have, we didn't define any age, gender or interview date, but we can do that very quickly here. So we can say that source one, this person is 32, they're female, and we interviewed them, or we better give a new value for that on the 13th to the 5th. Um, and that way we can filter these results anytime in the future. So if you look at the tabs that we brought in from the sources that came from the CSV file, because we have that data in that spreadsheet format, all those properties have come in there as well. And in Quirkos, that's super helpful because with the query view, we can query by the properties and then we can see results for them. So the people, so if we run a, a query here, we want to see the results of everybody whose age is 27. Um, and we can see the results of um, how we've coded their sources there. We can also have things like greater than or less than and equal. And so we can do um, yeah, people who are who are um, over 27. Um, and we can do that for any of the properties here. And we can do this for date ranges as well. So it will also work for date ranges and gender. So for example, if we wanted to see results from the men that we've coded in the project, it looks like that's just Simon so far. And from these um, subsets of the data, so for example, just the results from the men in the project, we can create an export file um, which just has those results in it. Um, so we can have reports which, which are based on just subsets of the data. So that's kind of the basics of working with the um, structured questions here. Um, so a couple of tips about how to format your word files. So basically make sure that you've got uh, a marker for the question and the answer, and that's consistent across the interview or all the different interview files if you're bringing in a bunch of them. If you want to bring in data from tabulated format, again, make sure that the data is in columns and the participants, so each respondent has got their own row. You don't have to fill in everything here. Um, you just do need to make sure that you save it as a CSV file. Quirkos can't bring in an Excel file directly, um, but it gives you great flexibility to bring in um, other data that you have, so participant data, uh, mixed methods or quantitative data even, together with the um, open-ended qualitative data that you have. 
And don't forget, you can also import all the other sources of data here. So you can copy and paste from uh, websites or anywhere else where you have other sources of information. Um, you also can bring in uh, PDF files, plain text files, rich text files, and you can also import data from the Refi QDA standard. So if you've brought in, if you've got projects which you've created already in any other software package like um, Envivo or Atlas TI or Max QDA or Transana or deduce or um, F4 Analyza or any of these, you can bring them uh, straight into Quercos and back out from Quercos as well. So you can also export to the Refi QDA standard. Now you can also export your data from Quercos back out as a spreadsheet um, with the CSV data. Um, so this is super handy if you want to um, share the data with someone else that doesn't have it, or if you want to export as a Word document, um, you can do this and you can get um, a nice kind of formatted um, export. Um, so we've got everybody's responses here, um, how we've coded them, it's color coded highlights, um, as a standard Word file. So that's a great way to share with someone that doesn't have the software, so a supervisor or a colleague or a team member. And with the spreadsheet export, you can also um, save the data back out in such a way that uh, you can show, um, here it is, uh, let's look at the quotes here, um, all the information which you've, you've had in your project. Um, so here's the export here. Um, so there's the quotes that we coded, um, what source they came from, how they were quoted to. And so getting this back out into CSV, again, is a very powerful way for you to do more explorations, more visualizations. Um, and even do some quantitative analysis in Excel if you wanted to do that. So um, that's all I was going to cover in this session because I want to keep it very focused on the structured data import. Um, but if you had any questions, um, do let me know right now and I'll answer them. Um, otherwise, do drop us an email always at support.quercos.com. And don't forget, you can always go to our website. Um, you can try Quercos for free. Um, the free trial is exactly the same as the full version and you can try the cloud version for 14 days or the offline version for 21 days um, and really see how um, Quercos makes qualitative analysis very visual, very easy to use, uh, very colorful and fun. Um, so do, do jump on there and uh, let us know if you have um, anything you like. Um, and always get in touch if you have any queries. We're active on Twitter and Facebook, um, as well as email and social media. And we'll always answer to um, comments in the YouTube channel as well. So uh, do get in touch with us on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and we will respond and help it with anything we can there. So no questions. So I'm just about to shut the session down. Um, again, do like and subscribe um, so that you find out when we posting these and you get notifications of when our upcoming webinars are. We run the monthly and we're always covering something different. So do pop in and let us know how you're getting on with your qualitative analysis.